you produced and starred and directed in a short film called The Fortress. What was that like wearing so many hats on one project? Um, it, w it was cool. I didn't intend to act in the first short film that I made. Mm -hmm. um, I, I didn't want to do that, but I, I was so compelled to tell the story, which was based on a one-act play that Anna Ziegler had wrote the playwright. She's doing all kinds of amazing things now. Um, she had, they had asked me to do the one-act play, and mm -hmm. I, I, it didn't fit in the schedule, but I couldn't get the story out of my head, and I realized, I think this is a short film. And then um, uh, I couldn't really think of or find an actor to do the part the way I knew the part needed to be done. And I had been cast in the part, so I knew, so I knew it would take, look, I, I remember thinking, I was like, so many actors are in episodes of TV shows that they direct. David Schwimmer was in episodes of Friends. He directed, dude, Ben Affleck played the lead and directed Argo, Mel Gibson, um, uh, what's, the, what's the movie? The Braveheart. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I was like, so it's ambitious to do that on your first, but it was a, it was a very simple, it was just a, a, a sort of a, a date at a table. So it wasn't like I was trying to do it. it was, um, so I wanted to do it a very specific way, so I, I cast myself, and I knew that I would have to prepare uh, twice as hard, which I think actually ended up being a benefit. Mm -hmm. So I had to know everything's backwards and forwards because I couldn't lose one second. So, and also, so the it was three hats. I had to prepare them separately. I mean, producing it and getting ready for that shoot was its own thing, which I would say was the hardest thing, is the thing I'm least interested in doing. I hate being a lead producer. It's just so much worrying about insurance and just it's so much. It's not like much. the art side of it. You're like directing, you have a vision of a film and acting, you're bringing that vision to life and putting your own flair on it. The produce, production part is not, I doesn't um, get those same juices flowing, I would assume. But if you want what you want as a mm -hmm. director, and, and you know, I didn't have a producer, I had like co-producers that helped me with the technical and the paperwork. Mm -hmm. Uh, but I was the, the lead producer, and it was my mo I was putting my money in it. I wanted to make this, and I wanted to. I didn't. I knew I wasn't going to get that money back, and so I had my skin in the game. And so I, 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 uh, I want the producer and me wanted to be sure that the director got everything he needed. Um, so producing was the largest part, so forth, um, and then directing it was an absolute joy I knew exactly what I wanted the most important part casting the right girl you know half of eight they always say 70 80 percent of directing is casting mm -hmm. um, and uh, the acting part was not hard I just remember the one thing I was on a flight from LA and we were approaching production and I was like I really have to just look at this as an actor and I had to really turn off my brain from thinking about music and production and mm -hmm. setups I had to like stop thinking about any of that and pretend that you've been hired for this job and just work on and I spent that entire flight it's a six-hour flight working on a what it was like ten pages of of just uh, and I remember that being, I'll never forget that and then because I knew I needed to knew, know that backwards and forwards because I knew things would go wrong on the day mm -hmm. uh, and I wouldn't have to worry about He's getting the serious, actor. Folks. The sleeves are getting buttoned. He's oh, getting yeah. serious oh. now. <laughs> Let's uh, really get down there. Why am I buttoning my sleeves? It's <laughs> like a random... <laughs> I have all these it. ticks, I yeah. guess. I, um, and I wanna, and I, now I need to finish buttoning them You're because gonna, of my OCD. It's going to slowly devolve into you just shaking into a corner. <laughs> <laughs> but the questions are going to get harder and harder. You're going to fall deeper into psychosis by the time this is over. I think I've answered that, right? You have, yeah. Okay. What attracted you to directing? Oh gosh, I knew I needed to direct probably halfway through my 20s or towards the end of my 20s. I had worked with so many directors and my brain, look, I had been doing like d directing sketches and air bands and things in high school and I've started teaching and teaching and directing are, they're not the same thing, but they are uh, sisters, they are related. Um, I had worked with so many directors, stage mostly, and then screen, but at the time I knew it, and I directed much more on stage than I have uh, on screen. Mm -hmm. And I just would watch, I could see what the actor needed to hear, and I could see the director, what the director needed, and I could see that piece of information. It's, I was like, one sentence is all that they need to hear, and they didn't, I could see, I could see, and, I, and, I, and it's, you can't step out of your lane and direct another actor. You certainly can't tell a director what another person needs or, you know. Uh, and I just remember being like, 
sitting on my, and, and, and dying to problem solve that. Um, and I watched that happen a lot. And then I also watched what I found to be enormously impressive directing and useful and, and things I learned a ton from that never would have thought of or sort of, sort of mastering the whole arc and the art of it, not just moment to moment. Mm -hmm. And I also saw directors lose, lose, lose the belief in cast members, lose, uh, just lose the play and not have their, and so I, I really watched the, the do's and don'ts, mm -hmm. where I learned from, where I learned not to do, and that craving to problem solve um, my brain kind of kind of just does that so I, I knew I knew so I started with a, a friend's small company and directed a one act and just loved it and, and most of the stuff that, with the exception of like two things uh, I have not gotten paid to direct yet that's I mean that's a budding mm -hmm. aspect of, of my career um, but it didn't it didn't matter I, I, I can find myself when I'm directing something I, I just like it when you're acting in a role, it fills your subconscious, I can't stop. Mm -hmm. And I love it. Uh, I'm calmer when I direct, weirdly. I'm, Andrew McCarthy says this, he's directed a bunch of episodes. I said, what do you like more, acting or directing? He goes, acting makes me more anxious, directing makes me more stressed. Yeah. And I know, because acting, you're, you're internally kind of working on yourself and punishing yourself, well, was that okay? And mm -hmm. uh, working out yourself. And directing, it's outward. So you're worried about time, is everyone, you're relying, you're directing a thousand different departments. Yeah. And I just feel like when I'm in that moment, I'm super calm. If there's chaos outside of me, I am so, it's almost like there has to be, it's like en the laws of entropy. There, there has to be chaos somewhere. If it's mm -hmm. calm out there, then it's crazy in here. And if it's, if, it's, yeah. if it's crazy out there, then I am like in my element solving crazy. <laughs> I don't know. I just love it. Now there's uh, three other things that I want to talk to you about. Um, they're all, they probably go down in importance. Um, two very important things and one important to me and you. <laughs> so you're, you're working on a documentary called Tati. Uh, please explain what that's about, what drew you to it, what's your role, you know. It's a beautiful story from what I can see. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, this has become easily the most important thing I've ever worked on in my life, by far and away the most rewarding and the most challenging. Um, Stephanie Angel, who was a script supervisor, uh, season two of Blacklist, we became pals, mm -hmm. and she had created a company called Angel Light Films, mm -hmm. which goes in and works with kids between the ages of five and 18 that have or have had a brain or spinal cord tumor. So uh, she had told me about this company, and she had directed something like 11 or 12 films on her own, and, then, and, and really needed to start outsourcing it and wanting to build her company and get mm -hmm. other directors involved. So she approached me and asked me if I would direct one. I was like, I can't produce it. I was like, I don't yeah. want to lead no, produce. We're that, she yeah, goes, we're, we did that road. No, 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 no. I was like, let me lead, I can lead the creative. And she was yeah. like, absolutely, I'll produce it. And, uh, and she explained it to me and it's right in line with what I believe about arts access and education and how important it is. And she had told me something that stuck with me. She goes, all the kids she's worked with have gotten better. I was like, Great. They had finished treatment, but they still had checkups and so forth, and their health continued to mm -hmm. improve. And I was like, so then when she asked me, and I saw the picture of the girl, and she was the first person that Angel I had connected with that was mid-treatment. She was mid-chemo. Mm -hmm. She had a brain tumor removed, and she was mid-chemo. Her name is Tatiana Bernard. And I saw the picture of her, and there's this like picture of her in her hospital gown, and she is like shining, like bright as a star. I immediately fell in love. And I was like, this kid, I called Stephanie, I said, uh, I want to make a documentary too. She's mm -hmm. like, what? I was like, I want to make the short film because there's a process where you go in and they have a questionnaire and you get to know them and you help sort of draw out of their imagination and encourage them. It can be anything they want. Um, and I was like, I want to track that process of your company, Angel Light Films, going in and developing a short film with mm -hmm. someone that's never made a film and like the short filmmaking process and track her health at the same time. Mm -hmm. So we can see the correlation between health, making art and health. Yeah. So that uh, was my theory. Um, and I know it can go any directions and documentaries don't always go you plan. And I had, uh, we had it sort of, I was aware of that mm -hmm. and aware of what that might mean, um, obviously in, in, in various ways. Um, and so we started six months ago. We actually just recently shot the short film inside of it. So we developed for six months and tracked her health when she was well enough. Mm -hmm. um, 
and you know we're going to shoot. We're editing the short film now. We're going to shoot the red carpet premiere, so she can see her film That's and have beautiful. a red carpet experience. Yeah. Um, so there's a few more things to do. Obviously, editing the documentary is going to be the monster, but yeah. Um, and it, of course, I'm producing the documentary, and I'm me and Stephanie are co-producing <laughs> it, lead producing it together. That is the part I don't like. Right, right. But I know I need what I need is the director. So. Um, I think it's important so that's what it's in about. this day and age to show real stories. Yes, TV and movies are about escapism, but there also needs to be some focus on some real issues. And I know, I'm not sure if you're familiar with Justin Baldoni, he has a series called My Last Days, and he films cancer patients in their decline and, and ultimately them passing away. So it's these kinds of things are very important to, to show. There is like There are other remember? sides of... I mean, not that people aren't aware that there are like serious things going on, but sometimes you look for TV for an escape, and sometimes uh, I remind you, you to be grateful. Yeah, absolutely, it, there's it, so many benefits to the to doing these types of programs. I was grateful for my blacklist job for mm -hmm. every possible reason, mm -hmm. and it only compounded my my gratitude for it because it actually affords me the opportunity to do something like this. Right. I have a steady income, and I. I also wanted something creative to work on outside of Blacklist because I don't work every day and I wanted to make sure I'm still being challenged and just get some guest star roles here and there and some other acting projects. But uh, this just turned, I was just gonna direct a short film and it's now turned into this giant, uh, this giant project. But also telling real life stories, but you, there is kind of a sort of an unwritten script too. Yeah. There is a, you have to have a mission statement and a goal of what you wanna get. And then you have to sort of almost like acting where you're, you, you have a plan and then it goes a different way, or the mm -hmm. director blocking it a, a different, whole different concept. And you, if you've done your prep, then you can. Some of the best stuff is the stuff that's unplanned. Right. So uh, it, there is a lot of similarities between, between even even between docs, and uh, and fiction, and uh, directing both and acting. There is they are related. They are Absolutely. sisters. I um, agree with you. But yeah. The second thing that I, I look up to you for is you are also a mentor uh, for uh, young actors. Is that correct? I, well, um, or you, or you are there mentors. are there are a couple of uh, of there's not any one actor I'm mentoring. I mean, I have friends that are younger actors mm -hmm. that you know we go to for advice, but uh, I actually find like it's really self advice when I'm sort of right, right. But but no, I, I've taught at a few sort of institutions, uh, uh, Broadway workshop. Mm -hmm. I've helped raise money for. Golden Wall Gang Camp, Paul Newman's camp that works with sick kids. They yeah. have free access to sort of the arts and everything. Mm -hmm. That's an amazing organization. I'm um, trying to actually connect them to my documentary, and they might get the get Tati and her family to oh, go up for a weekend. Nice. We're, we're uh, hopefully knock on wood. And um, Broadway for All is an amazing, amazing company mm -hmm. that teaches, sort of gives free classes to uh, kids that are in inner city schools that might not have the opportunity, the access, the yeah. travel ability, or their school might not offer it. Um, so, I love that uh, so much, and it reminds you of the joy of why you got into this business. The love of creating and of acting, performing, um, so yeah, I've been doing that. What, what does it feel like to be on this network television series where you may have people looking up to you without even knowing it? You know, whether, maybe they do reach out to you via social media or, has that impact hit you on any level? So indirectly, you are teaching. That's a good question. Um, I don't take for granted the opportunity that Blacklist has given me mm -hmm. um, beyond a regular job. The visibility, which has allowed me, which has allowed more interest in me as a teacher, trust to come into mm -hmm. Tatiana's home. Oh, mm -hmm. he's he actually is a legit person in this industry. So it really has created opportunities that I would want to uh, create, including, you know, it's funny. I talk to a lot of guest actors that come on the show, especially young ones that have a lot of questions, and um, I guess that's something that's natural that's happened. Um, I, uh, well, you're you're in a mentor role because you are. An established regular on that program they're looking for you to give them advice on the business because you've been around and done such you have had such a long career and crazy yeah <laughs> How old are we it's getting? always crazy but 
But young actors are hungry and they're like sponges. For well, I remember movie. being like that, mm -hmm. really, and being so, really so grateful when I felt welcomed on a set or in a production when mm -hmm. I was the rookie or super green. Yeah. Uh, and uh, whenever I would learned or was treated well or welcomed, uh, I just remember how important. So it's the most natural thing mm -hmm. to want to be that person for someone who's, I can see them coming in scared or concerned. And, yeah. Um, but there was a guest star, I'm forgetting her name. What's her name? She was her first co-star, guest star, and I had a scene with her. This was a couple weeks ago. And we were talking in the green room, and I was like, oh. And she was like, yeah, this is my first time. I was like, oh, you're going to have fun. Da, da, da. And she yeah. was like, I just don't want to make a mistake. I was like, there are no mistakes. There are no mistakes. First of all, you get, you get another take. Mm -hmm. You get to shoot it again. Yeah. And, um, and I was like, you can ask me anything you want. I yeah. was like, this is, you want to do it again? Like, right, right, right. Like, and we did a lineup, and they're like, can we um, get first team in to line up for marks? Because they did that with second team, which is the stand ins, had lit the scene, and then they just want to make sure it matches when first team goes in, because we were like looking over a shoulder through a door, so it's like a sliver of area for the camera to, to see through. And, uh, they're like, can we get a lineup for first teams for Mark? Okay, yeah, just a uh, technical delay. He's cleaning floors. <laughs> well, uh, gotta be clean in this place. Um, so I was saying about this uh, young actress, uh, super cool, and she asked me, and they said, oh, can we get first team lineup? And it was really cold out, it was inside and outside a door and for Mark's. And she looks at me and she goes, um, what is that? And I was like, and I remembered, I was like, oh my God, just, some of the most basic stuff that you've never, you, they don't teach you that in acting class, you don't know that in an audition. I was like, oh, they're just lining up the cameras. Yeah. We just stand on our marks and just take a beat and look where we are. It's an opportunity to get used to the feeling and so yeah. forth. She's like, thank you, thank you. I was like, this is great. And I could see her one time get nervous in a take and stuttered or something. And I was like, and I remember being like, I was like, can we go back? Can we go back? Because I, that's a luxury in a position when you're regular that, it, that you, you have, can just right? say, uh, can we just do that again? I know if we're behind or not behind when we can't ask that and not ask that. Well, and it was so rewarding of, to help her yeah. and help her not be nervous and do her best job. I it think that like, says a lot about you because I'm sure other, other not a, maybe on your set, but on other sets, people, the series regulars don't want to be bothered with extras. I've seen, I've experienced stars, both. I've experienced both being don't like, look at me, don't this, don't I've, that. I've been through that mm -hmm. and I've been through the other experience, and it's like, come on now. And why put somebody through that experience? Come on, dude. I don't understand it. Yeah. I don't understand. I don't understand, dude. I, a lot of egos. Be kind. Yeah. I don't. I, I don't understand. I don't under. It, it takes less energy to be kind. Yeah. I don't know why that exists. And also, on the other end of that coin, you were also somebody who was green at one point too, and now just because you're the star of the show, don't turn your back. Don't forget where you came from. Is what is what I the lesson of that? I don't story understand is. why some some sometimes it's yeah it has part of it's, it exists in the industry absolutely and, and every industry for that matter it's not just uh, acting in general but so now you're the third thing that I like about you and this is obviously way less serious than the other two things we just discussed you threw a birthday party for your dog and Danny, oh you should be proud of that I stand you saw with my you there Instagram. I saw your Instagram and I think you should be proud of that to hell with people who think it's my ridiculous. girlfriend initiated that. And, and she's a keeper. How about that? Yeah. Tell and it was she so sealed good. the deal with that one. <laughs> it was funny. Yeah. It was it was really if you look at the pictures uh, from that night, mm -hmm. uh, I look at the pictures of my girl, I'm like, everyone is like it's just like yeah. the most unposed, unadulterated joy. It's been it, it's been look, I'll thank Blacklist for this, this, mm -hmm. this. Uh, not having to live and die by audition to audition or whatever. Uh, I, I really got to lean into my life a little more and mm -hmm. It, it's great. I could get a dog. I could, I, I, you know, and have other things that I think is probably one of the most important things as an actor in this industry is to have a life. You yeah. have to draw on your life in order to. Absolutely. Yeah. And so, what do you do in your downtime other than throw dog birthday parties? <laughs> <laughs> it could be a side career. You could have like a dog birthday party business if you want to. <laughs> but like, what do you do for your own time to decompress from shooting, to decompress from the seriousness of your documentary, to decompress from directing, all that stuff? What do you do to just just be and be, center yourself in that kind of thing. Uh, walking the dog has become really a nice meditative thing to do. Mm -hmm. uh, listen to some music and walk the dog. Mm -hmm. I end up usually making calls and doing business calls and stuff like that on that time. But um, that's been a really beautiful sort of thing that might have been annoying when you first get a dog. How are you going to make time for that? And it becomes a it became cool. Um, you know, just maybe having some dinner with some friends. 
and there's so much TV that I want to catch up on. I just started, I watched Triple Frontier last night, and I just, I just started start, that. How was it good? It was pretty good. Yeah. It was, it, it was, I don't want to say anything, give anything away. Yeah, don't, it, yeah, I'm in some ways it was better than I expected. In some ways it was like, mm, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, it's certainly entertaining. Um, I just started Schitt's Creek with Eugene Best Levy. show on television. It's so good. Best show on television. It is the, I've actually had to stop watching it on my commute because people look at me like I should be in an insane Because you're laughing so hard. I'm laughing so the hard. The most I've laughed out ridiculous. loud. I'm laughing out loud hard. The Rewinding so I don't miss the other. 100% agree with you. I'm, I literally. That, I don't know why that show isn't bigger. Yesterday was the first I started season one over again because I have not seen season five. I'm watching it on Netflix. So I just started season one all over again. I'm going right to it season four again. Awesome. It's, it's the craziest show. It's the funniest show. So something like that is, it's hard for me to enjoy or focus on TV show when I have when I have a lot of lines to learn. Uh -huh. And I see that, you know, of course they could change the schedule so suddenly you could be up the next day. So there's always kind of a, it's, it's hard for me to completely unwind. There's always something with a documentary mm -hmm. that, so it, it's, uh, and I don't, I just can't unwind when I know something has to get done. Um, so it is a treat when my mind is free and can relax for something. And I'll really, honestly, some TV and some dinner is, you know, is really. It. Since we brought up Schitt's Creek and we did speak about comedy earlier uh, in an earlier interview, would how hard would do you think that would be for you as an actor to portray the character on that show? Say, say not the dad obviously, but David. Like, could you see yourself playing that role? A thousand percent. Yeah. I want to. Yeah. I can't wait for an opportunity to be able to do that. Actually, once it started, I actually called my manager. I was like, have you seen this show? If there's, mm -hmm. and I think it's shot in Canada, so it's a it little is. harder. It is. shot in Canada. Um, yeah. I mean. That's the kind of show you work on and you don't understand how you can even get through a day without, and actually get something on film. I can't imagine how funny it is to work there and, and try to, like, not bite your face off trying to not laugh at each other. It is. Uh, I am. I say this humbly. Mm -hmm. This is a beautiful thing that comes with age and experience. I am not intimidated or afraid of any set mm -hmm. at all. I, put me, give me the hardest monologue in a Steven Spielberg movie. I know I will do my work and I'm not afraid of it. I only will get excited by it. Mm -hmm. Put me on opposite Jim Carrey in some screwball comedy and my dreams are coming true. Mm -hmm. I, I'm not, I don't know that I would do the, a great job, I don't know, but I, 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 I know I will do something. I, I, I don't know how to explain this. I, I just, now I just feel like, I just wanna, I don't, I don't know how to, it's, it's, it's not conceit, it, it's, it's, it's such a, it's, it's a, I give credit to Blacklist. I could go into any audition now and I'm not, Look, your heart rate still goes up because you're mm -hmm. like, it's, it's awkward and you, you know, if you don't get nervous, then like if you don't get butterflies before you make an entrance on stage or something, then, then something is wrong. Like there yeah. always is a, whoa, because you're risking something. But I don't know, I would just get giddy. I, I, don't, I don't know, there's something about that that is, it becomes less, God, I have to do a good job if I don't go to a job. That's just a block, yeah. that's just yeah. a mental block. So I, I just, if it doesn't go well, they, they can cut you out, or mm -hmm. you learned, or... The only person that can sabotage you is yourself. Yeah. If someone can be mean to you, or da 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 If you say yes to it, and you use that energy, there's... There are no mistakes yeah. if you've prepared. Perfect. That's what I think. Amir, thank you so much for your time. This has been a, a wonderful hour of speaking to you. Uh, if anybody wants to watch the other portions of the interview, they are above this post, and Please check out the entire hour when you have a chance because this is I'm sorry I spoke fantastic. for so long that you had no, to cut this no. up into 18 interviews. Uh, Wait till I get a hold of your manager. <laughs> no, thank you so much. It was it was a beautiful interview. I had a great time and I very much appreciate you. This is a, a pleasure. Thank you for having me thank so much. You.